Did you ever notice how politicians and celebrities and activists, they always like to be seen with kids? Politicians always seem to have like a dozen kids standing behind them whenever they want to talk about something or, or make a point. And celebrities pretend to talk to kids or they want to interview them or activists want to be seen with kids. You ever wonder why that is? why they pretend to care, why they always have these kids around or want to talk to them so they can tug at your heartstrings. It makes them look good. It makes it look like they care about something when they really don't. It makes it seem like they have an interest in protecting them. We have to save our generations. We have to protect the children, when very often it's those people the children need protecting from. It's a good way to enforce their agenda. And when you're dealing with a young person who feels like they're on the right track about something, it's a good way to tap into that energy and drain it and use it. And tear it out. They're like vampires with these kids and they suck their energy out and they leave nothing behind. Roe versus Wade. And I just got a sanction for even mentioning it. I guarantee you. I have a Roe versus Wade video, Truth About Roe versus Wade. That one is sanctioned so heavily by YouTube you can't even find it unless you're a subscriber. But Roe versus Wade, the woman's real name is Norma McCorvey. Norma McCorvey. And you can look this up for yourself. She has, has many videos of her own and has been seen in many interviews where she says, basically, she had no idea what the hell she was getting herself into. She was not after an abortion, did not really realize what was going on, and by the time she did, it was too late and that she completely regrets her involvement and wishes that she could go back and undo it. Norma had no idea. She was young and activists and politicians who had an agenda latched onto her and used her. And when they were done using her, they threw her away. And then she was sitting there in the dust like, what the hell have I done? 1973, 50 million abortions later, and she's got the weight of that on her heart. That has really worn her out. She was young. She got used by people in the system who had a personal agenda, people who knew exactly what they were doing and set out to use her. Roosters. Well, it says, uh, it says Polska, which if I'm not mistaken, means Poland. I think that's what Polish people call Poland. I don't know why there's roosters. This was actually sent to me by a subscriber who lives in Sweden. And I guess he either is Polish or visited Poland because I don't know why he would have a cup from Poland. But thank you, Robert. I appreciate the cup. I appreciate the mug. I was having a mug shortage too. But yeah, just like with Norbert McCorvey, they, they drain that energy. They use these kids. They like to be standing around with them. They like to take photographs with children so they can pretend to be guardians of the children. And indeed, especially where politicians are concerned, where the state is concerned, they consider themselves to be a better parent than you are anyways. That's a whole other argument. I talk about that a lot with public schools and the concept of in loco parenting. Loco as in Latin in the place of, not loco as in Spanish crazy, even though it is. But the state wants to be your kids' parents. And they want to use those kids to pretend that they care. And as far as the kids, they target you because you're naive and you're arrogant. Yes, you are. I'm so sorry. I know there's younger people might watch this and say, God, what is wrong with you? I was young too. We all were. And you know what? We were naive and we were arrogant. And for those of you who are around my age or older or close enough, don't you remember when you were young and thought you knew everything? Every young person thinks they know everything when they get to a certain stage. 
when they pass that adolescent or if it, if it gets fed into them when they're very young. And again, going back to public schools, when you talk about political agendas and social propaganda in public schools and they feed all this stuff into these young kids who don't need to know any of it yet. Their minds are too young. Their minds are still at that magic stage. Let them have that magic. Stop stealing it from them. Jesus, stop stealing it from these kids. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy what the system puts these young minds through. And it gets worse and worse and worse as time wears on. That's why people that are my age, and I've said it before, people that are my age and older, we all bitch about it because we've been there long enough to watch things change over the course of time and we see the differences and we see how it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. But you know, as you get older, you learn better and you realize, hey, I didn't know everything. Hey, I was wrong. Hey, you know, my viewpoint was kind of silly, kind of radical. But when you're young and you have a backward viewpoint or a jaded viewpoint, and there's people who are very important, very wealthy, very powerful, telling you that you're right because they want to suck that energy out of you and use it, you get a big head. You get a big head like these uh, survivors from the um, Florida shooting that these celebrities have been passing around lately. You know what I'm talking about? They've got these bright ideas or they think they have a bright idea and someone else told them how wonderful they are and shoveled a few more of their own ideas in there so they can use these kids. And just like Norma McCorvey, I can see them 20, 30 years from now sitting there thinking, oh my God, what did I do? What the hell did I do? And it's too late, too late. You can sit there and go reflect back on it like Norman McCorvey does and has for quite some time. Sit there and say, God, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. I wish I could take it back, but you can't. I feel bad for Norman McCorvey. I'd hate to carry the weight of that. I would hate to carry the weight of that. When important people are telling you that you're right and they surround you with yes men, they surround you with people that tell you that you're right and tell you how wonderful and perfect you are, and you're, you're exposed to this alternative extreme viewpoint from these people, it makes you feel like you're so important and so smart. And that's what you believe anyway, because you're young and you're foolish. You know, people always say, follow the money, but they rarely actually do that. Even the people who say it rarely do it. What's the financial interest? What's the political interest of these activists and celebrities and politicians who are getting paid to say the things that they are saying? That's the difference. I can sit here. I'm not getting paid to say anything. YouTube will see to that. YouTube will guarantee I will not get a dime for saying the things that I say on this channel because they don't want it to be heard. These other people, the Anderson Coopers of the world, the Ellens of the world, the governors and mayors of the world, these people are making major money for saying the things that they're saying and for following the agendas that they're following. They're guaranteed their power, guaranteed their position, guaranteed their money. So who's the radical? Who's the radical? And you fall in with that. If you stay with it, even if you don't believe in it, you'll have money, you'll have fame, but no integrity. And if you decide to have some integrity, you'll be used up and thrown away. But at least you'll have your integrity. Just some food for thought, folks. Just some food for thought.